Santiago was a substandard Marine. He was being transferred. That's not what you said. You said he was being transferred because he was in grave danger. That's correct. You said he was in danger. I said grave danger. You said, is there any I recall any what I said. I can have the court reporter read back to you. I know you. what I said. I don't have to have it read back to me like I'm... Why the two record. orders? Colonel? Sometimes men take matters into their own hands. No, sir, you made it clear just a moment ago that your men never take matters in their own hands. Your men follow orders or people die. So Santiago shouldn't have been in any danger at all, should he have, Colonel? You snotty little bastard. Your Honor, I'd like to ask for a recess. I'd like an answer to the question, Judge. The court will wait for an answer. If Lieutenant Kendrick gave an order that Santiago wasn't to be touched, then why did he have to be transferred? Colonel? Lieutenant Kendrick ordered the code red, didn't he? Because that's what you told Lieutenant Kendrick to do. Object! And when it went bad, you cut cases. these guys loose! Your Honor, you have markers inside of phony transport. Your Honor, you doctored the logbook. Damn it, Captain! You coerced the doctor. Consider Not yourself in contempt. You. Colonel Jessup, did you order the code red? You don't have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled to You them. want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Son, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. Who's gonna do it? You? You, Lieutenant Weinberg? I have a greater responsibility than you can possibly fathom. You weep for Santiago, and you curse the Marines. You have that luxury. You have the luxury of not knowing what I know, that Santiago's death, while tragic, probably saved lives. And my existence, while grotesque and incomprehensible to you, saves lives. You don't want the truth because deep down in places you don't talk about at parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. We use words like honor, code, loyalty. We use these words as the backbone of a life spent defending something. You use them as a punchline. I have neither the time nor the inclination to explain myself to a man who rises and sleeps under the blanket of the very freedom that I provide and then questions the manner in which I provide it. I would rather you just said thank you and went on your way. Otherwise, I suggest you pick up a weapon and stand a post. Either way, I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to. Did you order the code red? I did the job. Did you order the code red? You're damn right I did! Please, the court, I suggest the members be dismissed so that we can move to an immediate Article 39A session. The witness has rights. Captain Ross. Jack? The members of the court will retire to an anteroom until further instructed. All rise. What the hell is this? Colonel, what's going on? I did my job. I do it again. I'm going to get on a plane and go on back to my base. You're not going anywhere, Colonel. MPs, guard the Colonel. Yes, sir. Captain Ross. What the hell is this? Colonel Jessup, you have the right to remain silent. Any statement I'm being charged with a crime. A trial by court is that what this is? Or administrative I'm being charged with a crime. Right to consult with a lawyer prior to any further this questioning. This is funny. This lawyer may be a civilian That's what lawyer this is. By you at this your is... Own expense. I'm going to rip the lawyer. eyes out of your head and puke into your dead skull. You messed with the wrong Marine. Colonel Jessup, do you understand these rights as I've just read them to you? You friggin' people. You have no idea how to defend a nation. All you did was weaken a country today, Kathy. That's all you did. You put people's lives in danger. Sweet dreams, son. Don't call me son. I'm a lawyer and an officer in the United States Navy. And you're under arrest, you son of a... The witness is excused. I'm sorry, but I don't want to be a, an emperor.
That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful, but we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has barricaded the world with hate, has goose-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. We have developed speed, but we have shut ourselves in. Machinery that gives abundance has left us in want. Our knowledge has made us cynical, our cleverness hard and unkind. We think too much and feel too little. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent and all will be lost. The aeroplane and the radio have brought us closer together. The very nature of these inventions cries out for the goodness in men, cries out for universal brotherhood, for the unity of us all. Even now, my voice is reaching millions throughout the world, millions of despairing men, women, and children, victims of a system that makes men torture and imprison innocent people. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass and dictators die, and the power they took from the people will return to the people. And so long as men die, liberty will never perish. Soldiers, don't give yourselves to brutes. Men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, tell you what to do, what to think, and what to feel, who drill you, diet you, treat you like cattle, use you as cannon fodder. Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines. You are not cattle. You are men. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate. Only the unloved hate, the unloved and the unnatural. Soldiers, don't fight for slavery, fight for liberty. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke it is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man nor a group of men, but in all men, in you. You, the people, have the power. The power to create machines, the power to create happiness. You, the people, have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Then in the name of democracy, let us use that power. Let us all unite. Let us fight for a new world, a decent world, that will give men a chance to work, that will give youth a future and old age a security. By the promise of these things, brutes have risen to power, but they lie. They do not fulfill that promise. They never will. Dictators free themselves, but they enslave the people. Now let us fight to fulfill that promise. Let us fight to free the world, to do away with national barriers, to do away with greed, with hate and intolerance. Let us fight for a world of reason, a world where science and progress will lead to all men's happiness. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all unite! Good evening, London. Allow me first to apologize for this emergency channel. I do, like many of you, appreciate the comforts of the everyday routine, the security of the familiar, the tranquility, repetition. Bloody hell. I enjoy them as much as any bloke. But in the spirit of commemoration, whereby those important events of the past, usually associated with someone's death or the end of some awful bloody struggle, are celebrated with a nice holiday, I thought we could mark this November the 5th a day that is sadly no longer remembered by taking some time out of our daily lives to sit down and have a little chat. There are, of course, those who do not want us to speak. We think, just let me I think. I expect even now, orders are being shouted into telephones and men with guns will soon be on their way. It's chance of Damn it! Why? Because while the truncheon may be used in lieu of conversation, words will always retain their power. Words offer the means to meaning, and for those who will listen, the enunciation of truth. And the truth is, there is something terribly wrong with this country, isn't there? You designed it, sir. You wanted it foolproof. You told me every television in London. Cruelty and injustice, intolerance and oppression. And where once you had the freedom to object, to think and speak as you saw fit, you now have sensors and systems of surveillance coercing your conformity and subverting your submission. We need cameras. How did this happen? Who's to blame? 
<laughs> Certainly there are those who are more responsible than others, and they will be held accountable. But again, truth be told, if you're looking for the guilty, you need only look into a mirror. I know why you did it. I know you were afraid. Who wouldn't be? War, terror, disease. There were a myriad of problems which conspired to corrupt your reason and rob you of your common sense. Fear got the best of you, and in your panic, you turned to the now High Chancellor, Adam Sutler. He promised you order, he promised you peace, and all he demanded in return was your silent, obedient consent. Inspector, you're almost through. Last night, I sought to end that silence. Last night, I destroyed the Old Bailey to remind this country of what it has forgotten. More than 400 years ago, a great citizen wished to embed the 5th of November forever in our memory. His hope was to remind the world that fairness, justice, and freedom are more than words. They are perspectives. So if you've seen nothing, if the crimes of this government remain unknown to you, then I would suggest that you allow the 5th of November to pass unmarked. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek, then I ask you to stand beside me one year from tonight, outside the gates of Parliament, and together we shall give them a 5th of November that shall never, ever be forgotten. How many of you know the 16 words in President Bush's State of the Union address that led us to war? How many know my wife's name? Now, how can you know one and not the other? When did the question move from why are we going to war to who is this man's wife? I asked the first question, but somebody else asked the second, and it worked because none of us know the truth. The offense that was committed was not committed against me. It was not committed against my wife. It was committed against you, all of you. So if that makes you angry or feel misrepresented, do something about it. When Benjamin Franklin left Independence Hall just after the second drafting, he was approached by a woman on the street. The woman said, Mr. Franklin, what manner of government have you bequeathed us? And Franklin said, a republic, madam. If you can keep it. The responsibility of a country is not in the hands of a privileged few. We are strong and we are free from tyranny as long as each one of us remembers his or her duty as a citizen whether it's to report a pothole at the top of your street or lies in a State of the Union address, speak out, ask those questions, demand that truth. Democracy is not a free ride, man, I'm here to tell you. But this is where we live. And if we do our job, this is where our children will live. God bless you. for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. Greed clarifies, cuts through, and captures the essence of the evolutionary spirit. Greed in all of its forms. Greed for life, for money, for love, knowledge, has marked the upward surge of mankind. And greed, you mark my words will not only save Teldar paper, but that other malfunctioning corporation called the USA. Thank you very much. See those little black boxes? They're called telephones. I'm gonna let you on a little secret about these telephones. They're not gonna dial themselves, okay? Without you, they're just worthless hunks of plastic, like a loaded M16 without a trained Marine to pull the trigger. And in the case of the telephone, it's up to each. And every one of you, my highly trained Stratonites, my killers, my killers who will not take no for an answer, my fucking warriors, who will not hang up the phone until their client either buys or fucking dies! <laughs> Let me 
tell you something. There is no nobility in poverty. I have been a rich man and I have been a poor man and I choose rich every fucking time. Because at least as a rich man, when I have to face my problems, I show up in the back of a limo wearing a $2,000 suit and a $40,000 gold fucking watch. Hey boys, dig it out! Hit him! Hit Get the fuck off of me! Hey. You now, if anyone here thinks I'm superficial or materialistic, go get a job at fucking McDonald's, because that's where you fucking belong. <laughs> but before you depart this room full of winners, I want you to take a good look at the person next to you. Go on. Because sometime in the not so distant future, you're going to be pulling up to a red light and you beat up old fucking Pinot, and that person's going to be pulling up right alongside you in that brand new Porsche with that beautiful wife by their side who's got big voluptuous tits. <laughs> and who are you gonna be sitting next to? Some disgusting wildebeest with three days of razor stubble and a sleeveless moo moo crammed in next to you in a car load full of groceries from the fucking Price Club. That's who you're gonna be sitting next to. So you listen to me and you listen well. Are you behind on your credit card bills? Good, pick up the phone and start dialing. Is your landlord ready to evict you? Good. Pick up the phone and start dialing. Does your girlfriend think you're a fucking worthless loser? Good. Pick up the phone and start dialing. I want you to deal with your problems by becoming rich. Yeah. All you have to do today is pick up that phone and speak the words that I have taught you. And I will make you richer and the most powerful CEO in the United States of fucking America. I want you to go out there and I want you to ram Steve Madden's stock down your clients' throats till they fucking choke on it. Yeah. Till they choke on it and they buy 100,000 shares. That's what I want you to do. Yeah. You be ferocious. You be relentless. Yeah. You be telephone fucking Jalarat! Yeah. Now let's knock this motherfucker out of the park! Yeah. Ah!